This is July 1st, 2019, and we have some interesting weather in Guadalajara, Mexico, which is the capital of Jalisco. We have a hailstorm that has buried the town in five feet of ice. And Mexico is north of the equator. So this puts the summer in the north of the equator and Mexico experiencing five feet of ice after the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. So what we have in Europe at this time is a heat wave that's so intense it's broken all records. People in France have died and the Audubon in Germany is melting and disintegrating. Europe is sizzling in a scorching heat wave. This is summer weather 2019. So here we have in North America Oroville Reservoir, the largest earth filled dam in the world, influencing this hemisphere. There we have our marina. This reservoir is full right now. Here we're towards the afternoon and the sun is setting. June 28th, 2019. What I'm looking for here is um, the bleaching of the ultraviolet rays here. And the haze layer. This part of the country is crystal clear air with the trees. There's no pollution so that's pure haze on June 27th we have here the newly completed Orville spillway on the right hand side we have a trickle of water on the left hand side it's very slow uh, which suggests that they have tremendous control over that um, release of water right there. So the prior up to this Mexican ice storm, we had another day here of uh, a heat wave that had made the headlines. So it's climate change. Here we have June 25th. We have that trickle through the spillway there. We're going to go to uh, the webcam for San Francisco and take a look at the webcam there. Here we have June 24th. Um, so this coastal city, San Francisco right here, there's Salesforce Tower. The weather is mild, room temperature, 72 degrees. Let's go to the Oroville Reservoir for this date. And we're going to look at the sunset. We're going to see 
if we can see how much haze and pollution we could capture at the far reaches of the horizon here and ultraviolet so it looks pretty pretty bleached out that purple so that's like the from the sunset but look look at the browns the deep browns and you could tell that the, the, the they roped off the uh, spillway there in the upper right hand corner of the reservoir so nobody gets sucked down into the the runway there it's a giant runway for water to come off the lake and feed the whole valley of California. So here we have June 20th. I'm g going from San Francisco to LA at this juncture and I'm walking through the observation car. And you could see the weather from this observation deck as we travel along the rails. And I'm going to go to my first class cabin. Um, I'm sure most of these business and coach passengers have no idea that the first class exists or what it's like. I tried to study the business class seats and the coach seats and I couldn't tell very much of the difference. Um, so when commuting from San Francisco to LA I recommend the going in the first class cabins and taking some tea and the dining car so nice to be in first class. here I was having a yeah. a Corona and a lime it was afternoon Okay, June 19th. On the left hand side of the spillway of the largest earth frill dam in the world, there's a trickle, and on the right hand side, it's completely empty there. So they have tremendous control of the outflow. So this is the Lake Orville levels and you can see it's way above the normal. It's full to the brim that um, Orville Lake right now. So we have that in play. The other thing we have in play is the rising carbon dioxide levels. Um, 414, when I was in college, it was hovering around 400, and we never thought it would break 400, and if it did, we thought, we didn't think, uh, it would happen in our lifetime, so the rising carbon dioxide level has been rising exponentially, even faster than we thought just a few years ago, so you can see rapid change in the weather, something you've never seen before, um, so the trees do like ultraviolet to a certain extent and carbon dioxide to a certain extent so the redwoods have begun splitting in the north california um because as trees grow they're converting the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the width and height of the tree the carbon molecules come from 
carbon dioxide. It doesn't come from the nutrients or the water. So look at this bleaching of the midday sun. That's, that shows up really good there. Here's Yosemite, the, the Sierra, where the water comes off the mountain and it fills the reservoirs and streams and lakes and creeks all the way to the San Francisco Bay. That's white water. That's a lot of water right there. Compared to that to June 17th, look how brown and dirty that water looks. It's just begun to uh, come in to its full extent and wash away the high banks where the water behind that mountain originates. Here's some really haze. Um, that's total UV right there. Directly through the atmosphere, probably being magnified by the carbon dioxide levels. And look how blue the water is. It's completely full. Usually that lake, according to that graph, is not that full. No, the reservoir is not that full. So those trees are actually breaking due to the increased carbon dioxide and they're manufacturing so much rings and the thickness of the rings for the recent years that it, they're splitting open. Look at this, the spillway. It's on the left for that day and they got the right hand shut down. When that snow melt begins they're gonna have to turn that thing on full blast so when you see the camera pan over the valley all the streams and rivers are full to the banks everything is maximum full right now if there's like a drop extra from snow melt it will be flood conditions here's July 4th first this is today July 1st we have the Oroville Dam, the largest earth-filled dam in the world right here. You could look across the valley all the way to San Francisco Bay and see how full all the rivers and streams are. Right here is a good shot of that. The San Francisco Bay is a saltwater marsh, delta, and the fish there help sequester carbon dioxide. That's the term when you have a carbon sink. So when you're overfishing, you're removing that carbon sink and more carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. So fish in the water helps remove the carbon dioxide. Um, so for that reason, I do not um, consider it a detriment to raise fish and release them in the lakes. Um, some of the um, alpine streams would never have fish in them because if you recall, fish originated in the ocean and then swam up so far, they never made it up to where uh, they're artificially being planted, plant fish. We have the, it looks like it's getting ready to release full bore any minute. 